in addition to the heat not working this morning, I brought the computer in here to use it. Was trying to set it up and dropped it, and it was plugged in and it broke the cord off. So we didn't have any power for that. I was going to use that camera. And so uh, we're using the telephone today, which I hope will have good reception and a good output. Uh, and for those that usually tune in to the uh, broadcast, Billy, I know you said you were going to put on there. Bit. If you would, uh, also, it'd be, it might be a good idea to tell those people that the message from today will be on YouTube uh, by tonight. Because I know several people have been following these messages, and uh, we have a pretty good number tune in via our website. But as those of you watching on Facebook can see, we're not in our regular location. We're back in our fellowship area. And the bad news is, is the heat wasn't working in the auditorium. The good news is that back here, people can have donuts and coffee. <laughs> and so it's a more informal setting. And uh, I enjoy that, and I think everybody else does too. All right, if you would this morning, turn to Romans chapter 15. This will kind of wrap up what I use the word series from time to time. I, I think what the real deal is in teaching is that we started a series about 30 years ago and every, <laughs> every week is a continuation because as the Bible is clear, there's nothing new under the sun. And uh, as I was telling the folks here at Grace Bible Church, I sometimes apologize because it, you do things that I know the people here at our church know, but uh, you don't know what other people know that are out there listening. And uh, so about four or five, well, it was actually four weeks ago, I had received a, a email from an individual, and uh, he was a little upset about my stance on salvation by grace through faith. And uh, he was quoting from the book of James about works, how man is justified by works. And so uh, in responding to that, I told him, I said, it would really be a very lengthy email for me to respond to all the things you've said here. Rather than do that, what I'll do is next Sunday, I will uh, I'll do a message on James and Paul and show you the dif differences. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I did that. In the, and so four weeks ago, we were talking about James and Paul as relation to salvation. And so I didn't hear from him. And so the next week, I thought we'd just continue with that. And we did a message about James and Paul as it relates to prayer and healing. <laughs> and the next week, I got a message and it said, thanks for the messages. I got it. And so... <laughs> You know, some people are never going to admit they were wrong, but uh, that was his way of saying that he had seen the difference. What that led to was the next week, I, uh, it was a cold, rainy Sunday, and uh, Derek said, you know, not many people here. This might be a good day for a radio message. And I said, well, that's what I'm planning on doing. So I thought I would do a message that would, would be appropriate for radio and showing the differences in the Gospels, uh, the Gospel that Jesus taught, the Gospel Peter taught, and the Gospel Paul taught. And then last week, we carried that out a little further, and so three weeks ago, the title of the message was, What Shall We Preach? Last week, it was, Who Shall We Follow? And we went through, and I asked people the question, and I had a, had a lady write and, and say that this one verse really kind of sealed it for her, and it's a very simple verse, but it was Matthew 10, and I posed a question. I said, if you really believe Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are your instructions, I have to ask you, are you following Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus said, go not into the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Are you trying to reach Gentiles, are you trying to reach the lost sheep of the house of Israel? And if you are, where do you find them? And she said, that pretty much sealed it for her. And she began to, to go back and listen to some other messages. And so we've had a lot of comments and a lot of, a lot of 
uh, message, a lot of uh, email messages, Facebook messages uh, about the these very fundamental basic messages. And so I'm going to conclude all that today. And today is we're going to answer the question, what is our commission? Because we've all heard the phrase, the Great Commission. Uh, I remember when I moved here back in 1972, Highland Park Baptist Church was a huge independent Baptist church. It was during the time of the independent church movement when there were these large churches like uh, Jerry Falwell and Jack Howells and Lee Robertson. And as you drove down Bailey Avenue there, you went by Tennessee Temple and there was a, they had on the side of one of the buildings a huge stoplight painted. And they had it on green. The green was lit up and the other two were not. And the sign said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What it didn't do was complete the verse. It just said, Go into, and I mean, the first part's great, inf I mean, great information, isn't it? We ought to go into all the world and preach the gospel. But we've, we've heard people refer to the Great Commission, and as I mentioned a moment ago about Matthew 10, if you get right down to what the Great Commission says, 99.9% .9 of the people today that say they're operating under that commission are not. Amen. They're not. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. But I want to start in Romans 15 because in Romans chapter 15, Paul makes a great distinction between the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ while on earth and his own ministry. In Romans 15 verse 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. Circumcision would be Israel. He said in Matthew 15, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's what the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ was about. Of course, we know it included dying on a cross, being buried and raised again the third day. But in relation to his earthly ministry being carried out while he was teaching and preaching, it was to and for the nation Israel. He was a minister of the circumcision. And Paul said down in verse 16 that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Now go back, if you will, to Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to look at Christ's commission that he gave to the twelve uh, in three different places. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it's referred to as the Great Commission, and it is a Great Commission. Uh, and I've heard a lot of messages over the years from grace preachers about uh, the Great Commission. And uh, Brother Doug Dodd preached one many, many years ago, and it was called When the Great Commission Went Out of Commission. Uh, and uh, I thought that was pretty clever. But uh, the fact is, is that people say they're carrying out the Great Commission. I was taught that as a young man. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 24, Jesus said, uh, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. And so every year we had a special month when we uh, took up missionary offerings. And we were told until the gospel reached all the people on the earth that the end would not come, uh, based on that verse. And in Matthew 28, uh, in verse 16, the Bible says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, most people that follow this commission, they do pretty good with verse 19. Uh, they try to go to all the nations. They baptize them. Uh, a lot of people that 
that believe this commission will tell you baptism has nothing to do with salvation, uh, but it's an outward expression of an inward confession and all that kind of stuff. But verse 20 is something that I don't know of anybody today that is carrying out the Great Commission or says they are, is actively doing. You say, what do you mean? Well, look in verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. One of the key words in that verse is the word observe all things. Jesus Christ told his disciples back in Matthew 23, look back there in Matthew 23, In Matthew 23, verse 1, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Now, at the commit, when the commission, he's speaking just to his disciples. Here it says he spake to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Did you catch that word again? Observe. What would you suppose that those that sit in Moses' seat would be teaching? The law of Moses. Or Moses. They sit in Moses' seat. Whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. There's an action word there, do. It has to do with a performance. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. And then he goes down and begins this discourse on these hypocritical Pharisees that believe they're keeping the law. He says there in verse 4, For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Like preachers today that preach the law. They want to put the people that listen to them under the law, but they're not keeping the law. It's too grievous. It's too hard. Uh, he said all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Now, I'm not going to take time to read all of that, but when you get down to verse 13, he says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees! I know we'll forget here the man teach one day and he was going through these woes. And he said, when the Bible says woe, you better woe. And he was using it like a horse. Woe. Well, that's not the woe. That's W-O-E. It's far more serious than that. Uh, but at any rate, Jesus Christ instructed the disciples and the multitude whatsoever these teachers of the law bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Go back, if you will, to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, Look in verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if, they, if thou bring thy gift till the altar. Now, folks, he's not bring, talking about bringing your tithes and offerings and laying them down there and, at the altar in front of the pulpit. If thou bring thy gift to the altar, well, I would suppose that they're bringing sacrifices. And he didn't rebuke them for bringing the sacrifice. He said, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remembers that 
Thy brother hath ought against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Then I would ask you, did Jesus Christ tell them to make offerings? Bring them to the altar? Amen. Whatsoever I've taught you, he said, that observe and do. And yet people say, well, we're, we're fulfilling the Great Commission. No, they're not. There's many people who would stand on the housetop and shout that we're not under the law and we're not teachers of the law, we're preaching salvation by grace, and many are. And yet they say they're keeping the Great Commission, but they're not. Whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Uh, and all you got to do, it's like I said last week, all you got to do is take the book of Matthew and read through it. And just notice the teachings of Jesus Christ and his disciples. And if you are honest, you will have to admit that you're not doing those things and neither is your preacher doing those things that Christ taught. Like take no thought for your life, what you're going to eat, drink, or put on. Now, the very preachers that preach this kingdom message, kingdom doctrine, they take a lot of thought about what they're going to eat and drink and travel in. I mean, come on. It's a, it, they're not following that for a minute. But you see, it's as I said before. People go through the Bible like a bulldozer, and they pull out the verses that they want to use and the ones that they can use to put people under bondage, and they teach those as doctrine for today, and instead of dividing the Bible as it's divided, they teach that there are parts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And matter of fact, I was having a discussion several weeks back on Facebook with a fellow that he lives here in town. And he said, I, I, I posted, I said, you're not really, he's a preacher. I said, you're not really you're not really following the teachings of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, yes, yes. That's, they, everything he writes on Facebook is about his, 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 his kingdom ministry that we've got, this kingdom ministry. Well, there's a kingdom ministry. We're translating the kingdom of his dear son. But I know this particular preacher pretty well. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I gave him that verse, and he said uh, about take no thought for your life, what you're going to eat, drink, or put on, and he said, well, you, you have to distinguish that from uh, about what's really being said. <laughs> and I said, what's really being said is what the words say. But they don't acknowledge that. Uh, too much, well, I don't say too much money and all that, but, and there is. The, the point is that part of the Great Commission Included, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them. You see, the Great Commission was not just getting them saved. It was teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, go over to Mark 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, well, let, let's look back at verse 14, get the audience. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Isn't that amazing that <laughs> he's having to be, I mean, You'd think these guys just be rejoicing in the resurrection. And when he appeared to them, he upbraided them because of their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, 
every church of Christ preacher in the world knows verse 16 and preaches it as doctrine along with Acts 2.38. As a matter of fact, there was a lady on Facebook, I don't know, uh, I had some common friends with her and I, I didn't know what she believed, but I noticed yesterday she posted Acts 2.38 and was rejoicing in that truth. And all these people were commenting about uh, the importance of uh, following that repentance and water baptism. And so I went down and looked at the mutual friends and Brother Jerry was one of them and <laughs> several other people. And so I thought, this lady apparently has some understanding of right division. And so there were some people that jumped on the thread there and they really let her have it about Acts 2.38 not being to us and so forth. Well, then last night about 10 o'clock, she posted Ephesians 2.8 and 9. <laughs> I, guess she, I guess in eight hours she learned a whole bunch. But, but the fact is, is that they preach for doctrine. And the reason I'm making this point here, verse 16, but they do not Follow verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, as I said a moment ago, when you confront people with these verses, most of the time they all have answers. And I've told this story many times, but... Uh, if people knew listen all the time but there was a lady that attended our church years ago uh, her name was Bobby Berger and Bobby uh, came to the church through a relationship she had with Elaine Carson and Bobby was just a real sweet lady and uh, she got saved one Sunday morning after going home from church she was washing dishes and she said it just kept going over in her mind over and over again how that Christ died for our sins. And she'd been in Church of Christ all of her life. And she said, standing there at the sink, I got saved. And her daughter was helping her, Tammy. And so she turned to her daughter and she told her, she said, Tammy, are you saved? And as a result of her and Tammy talking, Tammy got saved. Well, this lady, the reason she had sought a different path from the Church of Christ was as she was attending there, she would see things in the scriptures and question them. And so she asked one of the elders there in the church, she said, why is it that we practice verse 16 of Mark chapter 16 but not verse 17 and 18. He said, well, that's where you rightly divide the word of truth. You divide between verses. Now, see, that makes it real convenient. As a matter of fact, there's a grace preacher now that's doing that. Lives up in Connecticut, somewhere up around there. I haven't listened to him over a year because he blocked me, but he, uh, <laughs> he was preaching and, and teaching things and... Uh, that was just so contrary, like I mentioned one time about 1 Corinthians 3, he said there's no judgment seat of Christ. And so several of us grace preachers would, would try to, you know, go on there and post things. And if you disagreed with him, he'd just block you. So you couldn't disagree. He was really trying to get a following. But he finally got down to the point where he actually said, in English words, he said, I have learned that when I read through Paul's epistles that I have to distinguish between the verses that he's writing to the little flock and the verses he's writing to the church, the body of Christ. And so I was communicating with a preacher up in Michigan and we were going back and forth talking about all that was being taught. And we kind of predicted what his end would be. He is now preaching universal salvation that everybody's going to be saved. Nobody's going to hell. The whole world's reconciled to God, and on and on it goes. Paul nailed it when he said, evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. 
Every false doctrine that a man teaches and embraces will lead to another false doctrine that has to be taught to support the other false doctrine. And the whole thing just spirals out of control. Whereas if we believe the words on the page, oh, and by the way, that elder told her, well, that's where you rightly divide. And then he said, you need to quit reading so much and listen to our preacher. <clears throat> if she hadn't told me that straight to my face, I don't think I would have believed it, that a man would have the gall to say that. But that's the thinking. People are not taught in most churches to study their Bible. Amen. They're taught to listen to what the preacher says and take it face value and run with it. Well, the fact is, there's people that claim to have the signs, but there's a couple that nail them, as Brother used to more used to say, nail their hide to the wall. He said these signs, and he didn't say some of these signs. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. There's people that claim to do that. They shall speak with new tongues. Some that claim to do that. They shall take up serpents. There's a few that do that. You are dead. <laughs> and they're dead, some of them. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they don't do that. And if they do, they're dead. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You see... These miraculous, supernatural gifts that were given to the eleven, like back in Matthew chapter 10 when he sent them out. He gave them the power to perform all these miracles and so forth. And Paul makes it clear in his epistles that the signs ceased. When that which is in part, it ceased when the word of God was completed, when that which is perfect has come. But those that say that they're following this commission, they don't do it. They just do part of it. They just believe, verse 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And then look over in Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, uh, well, let's just start down back in verse 27. It's a little more than I want to read, but we will take time to do it. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us? That's the first instance of heartburn in the Bible. Uh, <laughs> While he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known unto them in breaking of bread and as they thus spoke Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them peace be unto you but they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled, and why do those thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. 
And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Well, apparently they didn't really believe that. So what did he do? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, And thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit, the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. All right, go over to, I want you to hold on here and get Acts chapter 2. And it is no accident that these words show up like they do. Because he said in verse 47, now he's told, I told him to, preach the gospel. He's told them to baptize those that believe and those that believe and are baptized shall be saved. And now he says to them in verse 47 of Luke 24 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Well, notice what Peter said in verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. <coughs> Was repentance and remission of sins preached? Mm -hmm. Exactly what the Lord told them to preach. He never told you and I to preach baptism or repentance of sins. As a matter of fact, we know that the Apostle Paul could not have been operating under the Great Commission because of what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Jesus Christ said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them. Then let me ask you something. You that are listening, you that are here in, all, in the room here, did their commission include baptizing people? Yes. Amen. Absolutely it did. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them that believe. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, For Christ sent me not to baptize. Did Christ send the twelve to baptize? Yeah. Yes, he did. Did he send Paul to baptize? Yeah. No, he didn't. Then Paul could not have been operating under the Great Commission. But Paul had a commission. Look over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And you and I have a commission. And I would suggest to you that it is not a, the great commission. It is a greater commission. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. There it is. You wonder what your ministry is? Say, well, I've been, you know, people say, well, I've been wondering what my ministry is, what my gift is. Uh, it amazes me. You, you go and read these forums and stuff, and they have these seminars. Discover what is your spiritual gift. Well, wouldn't you suppose if you had a spiritual gift that God would reveal it to you? Or did he just put it there and hid it from you? So you'd have it, but you couldn't use it. I mean, it's just nonsense, the things that people teach. I mean, I was involved in that. I, uh, as a matter of fact, a man told me years ago that he had the gift. To, he, he said, I don't have a lot of spiritual gifts, but I do have the gift of discernment. And he said, with my gift of discernment, I've discerned that what you're teaching is wrong. <laughs> I said, well, then why don't you use your gift of discernment and show me in the scriptures where it's wrong? You know what that man eventually told me? We sat one afternoon with the Bible open for two hours, and I walked him through everything. 
And he said, man, everything you say is just dynamite. But he said, I want a church where I can take my kids and they have a youth program. He said, I'm not about to leave my church. I said, I never asked you to leave your church. I just showed you the truth. But he had the gift of discernment. <laughs> in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, to wit that God was in Christ. I'm sorry, verse 18. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Here it is. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now we all know what an ambassador does. He goes from his country to another country, but he goes there to represent the one that sent him. He doesn't go over there and proclaim his own doctrine or political views. He is to present the doctrine, the economic doctrine, the political doctrine of those that sent him. Now, he might not always fulfill that, but that's what his job is. An ambassador is sent forth to represent the one that sent him. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. When he saved the apostle Paul, he began the formation of the church, the body of Christ. Amen. And we are here in Christ's stead Stop and think about that, folks. Get a hold of that. We are here in Christ's stead. We are ministers of reconciliation, preaching this reconciliation message. What is it? Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, you know, sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. When Jesus Christ hung on that cross, he paid for the sins of the entire world for all men. He died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised again the third day. Now then, we're ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ that be ye reconciled to God. You see, all that Christ accomplished at Calvary, all that he did at the cross means nothing if you don't receive it. Amen. People say, well, y'all preach reconciliation, uh, uh, universal salvation. No. What I preach is that your sins were paid for at Calvary. He died for every one of them. Mm -hmm. And if you, when the moment you believe and receive it, then you get the benefit of it. But it was done whether you get the benefit or not. Amen. He died for them. He has made sin for us there on Calvary. So people say, well, that doesn't, nowhere in the scripture where it says he paid for our sins. Well, the Bible said he gave himself a ransom for all. That's pretty close to payment, isn't it? Amen. He gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So he died for all men. And it's our job to go out into this lost and dying world and tell people about it. As ambassadors for Christ, it's not our job to build buildings and systems and uh, develop a following and you know all this stuff that you see going on in religion. The ministry of reconciliation is proclaiming the truth that will show people how that Christ died for our sins, how he was buried and rose again the third day. So we have a commission. It is not the great commission of Matthew 28, Mark 16, or even Luke 24. Every one of those commissions are for the church, are for the disciples, for the kingdom program. And those instructions will be carried out when a kingdom of priests will go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's not ours. Ours is the ministry of reconciliation. And when he says, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, there's a two-part reconciliation. God's already reconciled the world to himself. Now you've got to receive it if you're going to benefit from it. If you don't, then you'll be eternally lost. I thank you for being here today. For those who have joined us via the internet,
Uh, thank you for joining us. If you are interested in the messages that we've been doing over the last five weeks, they kind of all run together along a central theme. They're all on our YouTube channel. It's simply Steve Atwood, and uh, they're all up to date. This message this morning will be on there hopefully by tonight. Unless they eat too much lunch and pass out from uh, uh, in a nap or something, but I'll try to have them on there by tonight. And uh, there are five messages now about uh, our ministry. And uh, folks, there are things that people really need to know. Amen. They really need to know them. And I appreciate your faithfulness in listening. Appreciate those that are here. For those that are listening that may be part of our assembly, I just want to let y'all know we're still meeting. And we're here every Sunday morning. And now we're here every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and 11. Uh, we quit having the 10 o'clock hour for a while. And now we're back to having both. And I appreciate this room full of people. Uh, you know, it's, it's proves one thing to me. If you want to have a capacity crowd, just get a smaller building. <laughs> and uh, so we, we got a capacity, we got a capacity building here, a capacity crowd here. And I appreciate everybody, whether you're here personally or not. I thank the Lord for our assembly. And uh, I do want to mention one thing in closing, because I think I did this before we signed on. But a, a dear brother over in North Georgia passed away. I never met him personally, but uh, had a, a great internet relationship as far as the truth of the gospel. Uh, after hearing the truth and so forth, he, the next month he uh, was diagnosed with terminal cancer that was 11 months ago and he passed away this past Friday night and uh, I would appreciate his name is Jeff Payne and uh, if you would pray for his family I would appreciate it he had a uh, daughter stepdaughter uh, several grandchildren and so forth uh, remember them in prayer all right let's close in prayer father we thank you this morning for your word we thank you for the time of fellowship together around it we thank you for the power of it lord help us realize it is not of us it's the powers of your word and it is the power of god and the salvation and i pray lord that the things that are said here would be to exalt you glorify you to exalt your word and magnify your word to people we pray for brother jeff's family as they grieve during this time and we just thank you lord for his testimony of salvation and for the fellowship we were able to have over the last 11 months. And we pray, Lord, that uh, others that are suffering, those that are sick, uh, those that have loved ones that are sick, we pray that they might find comfort during this time, those that are going through difficulties in life, trials and tribulations. Uh, you know every need. And we pray that uh, those that are hurting today might find comfort through the Scriptures. Uh, and they might uh, look to you uh, for solstice. Uh, we thank you again for this time together. Pray as we go out from here, we would be ambassadors that would do the work of the ministry that you've called us to do. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.